Okay, so the circuit below is a three-bit up counter with T flip-flops. Assume that Q2, Q1, Q0 equals 0, 0, 0 initially. For flip-flops 0 and 1, explain what happens and why it happens at each of the three points Q0, the clock input to F flip-flop 1 and Q1 at each of the three time instants, the first active edge of the clock, second active edge of the clock, and the third active edge of the clock. Okay, so I think the easiest way to, to do this is to just kind of trace what's going to happen. Um, at the clock edges. So I have Q0, Q1, and Q2. And I'm also going to put in a little column for clock for um, Q1 and Q2 because the clock signal is not the clock. The clock signal is Q bar from the flip-flop before. Um, so we're told that they all start at zero. So we can put that in. I'm going to start with Q0 because it's just a T flip-flop with the clock. So it'll be easiest to deal with. Its input is a constant one. One toggles. That means every time the clock um, edge happens, the egg, the, we get to the active edge of the clock, it's going to toggle because the input is always one. So um, at the first active edge of the clock, it'll be one. At the next active edge of the clock, it'll be zero. At the next active edge of the clock, it'll be one. And so this was for... Uh, the first three time instants, yeah. So, so that one was easy. Okay, so now um, let's pay attention to um, this. This is a little bit different because um, when we were looking at the input for the uh, you know the D or the T we were always paying attention to what the uh, signal was from the time before, but the clock's not going to be like that. So um, at the first active edge of the clock, Q becomes 1. And when Q becomes 1, Q bar becomes 0. So right there, that's zero. So our clock is zero. And since the clock is zero, then this nothing is going to happen because um, it's only going to change when the clock changes to one. So uh, we're not going to have a change here. Now, the next clock cycle, we have Q0 is 0, which means Q bar is 1. So our clock is now 1. Okay, so now something is going to happen. The clock is 1. Uh, we just reached an active edge, and it's a T flip-flop, um, and the input is 1. So the inputs are all these are 1, so it's going to toggle. So it'll be one. Now on the next cycle, um, Q zero, or Q yeah, Q zero is uh, is one. So that means Q bar is zero. So that means no change. Okay, so. Um, now let's look at 
this last one, I don't know that it's said to look at the last one, but I think we should. I think it'll help. Okay, so um, originally Q was zero, which meant that Q bar was one, and um, since Q bar was one, that meant our clock was one, which means that um, we'll have a toggle. Now Q1 is 1, so Q bar is 0, so there'll be no change. And now Q1 is 1, so Q bar is 0, so there'll be no change. Um, so... So we could say the clocks on um, flip-flop one and two are the complements of the output of the flip-flop before so when um, the clock is zero there's no change When the clock is one, it toggles. So that one's a little confusing, um, I think. Do y'all have like questions on it? Anything? Yes. So the best way to go about it is just taking the first flip flop and just going down. That's what I think. That's the way I do it. I, I don't know if that's the best way, but it's the way I do it. Yeah, so, because the first one is usually pretty easy, uh, and then you have to go to it from there. And uh, I think I did the next one the same way, so we'll see if I did. So other questions? All right. Okay, so for the circuit below, what is the secret sequence of output values on consecutive clock pulses starting from Q2, Q1, Q0 equals 0, 0, 0 until reaching 0, 0, 0 again. So, um, Q0 Q1 Q2 Let me do it over here. Q0, Q1, Q2. Okay, so um,
So Q0 um, is just a T flip-flop um, with an input of 1. And so on each clock cycle, it will toggle. So uh, one, zero, one, zero, and we don't know when we're going to get back to zero, zero, zero again, but um, well, we'll see. Okay, now um, Q1 is also just a T flip-flop with a clock and an input of one. So it also is just going to toggle. So that's easy. So Q2 is the one that's tricky. So let's look at Q2. So Q2, um, the on this one, the input is Q1. So the clock is one. So it will toggle. On the next one, the clock is zero, so it won't toggle. On the next one, the clock is one, so it will toggle. And on the last one, the clock is zero, so it won't toggle. And we're back to zero, zero, zero. And then um, on his solutions, he wrote these like this. With the Q2 first, and then Q1, and then Q0. But I did my columns like this because that was the order that it was here. It was easier for me to see it there. He just, just wrote them in a different order. So questions on this one before we get to the long one. All good? Anybody learning anything? Okay, good.